Hello and welcome back to another video and today we're going to talk about a game that is interesting and not necessarily great but very interesting and that is Night Trap and now this isn't just a normal version of Night Trap that normally if you had the Sega CD version it would be in a blue box with the blue striping and all that yes it says limited run all over the casing as you can see um, because this is from limited run games this is their reprinting of it but because it's all yellow this makes it not just a Sega CD game, but a Sega CD 32X game. Which that means you have to have both things to have the whole tower of power going. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Now, what's the big difference between them? The graphics in this are better as far as like some of the, uh, the menuing, um, the actual video itself. The size goes from being, you know, like a little tiny little thing to being most of the screen, you know, a reasonable size. Um, when I did originally look this up, this was definitely the better version, so I always wanted to get this, and when I found out Limited Run was doing clearance of all of their back stock, and this was still available somehow, uh, yeah, instead of paying 300 plus dollars, I paid about 30. And it does come in the old style, you know, mega case, and inside the mega case is an actual book that is full size, and it is... In fact, in color, with some screenshots from the game itself. Um, it's pretty high quality, I'd say. I can't tell you if it's the same as the original. I have never seen the original game. I have never even seen one in a store. So I'm just going off of what I have here, and I say it's high quality. Now, it does come on two discs. Um, the first one is in its little container, and the other one comes inside of one of these, which, fine. I'm sure that's not how it originally went. Um, they, there was a thing saying that Limited Run was just using CDRs. Uh, it says Disc Masters, I believe, on the back of them, and it kind of looks like it was burned and not pressed. However, I don't. They don't feel like they're cheap quality. Like they're. Let me see if I can get this out for you. Yeah, it, the case is very good at holding in the disc. So we're gonna take out disc number two. <laughs> it's because it's much faster. Uh, I have no idea if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but if you can, you can see, you know how when you burn the CDR, how where the data stops, it kind of stops the the change in color. It's going to probably be impossible to see on a camera, but yeah, that's why I think it might be burned. However, I had some CDs from years ago, some actual like genuine Beatles CDs that you bought from Target, Walmart, wherever. Um, they also had that same thing. So maybe that's just one way of making them. Um, they seem like decent quality discs. Um, yeah, so let's play it. All right, here we are. And we're playing on a genuine CRT using a genuine Sega CD. And I just wanted to pretty much show that when you start the thing up with this, it reads the disc right away. There's no, the system isn't struggling which it could be a testament to how good my laser still is in this thing. Or it could just show that there's nothing wrong with these discs. You know, that people claiming they were CDRs that were poorly made. At least this one isn't. I can attest for everything. Um, so this game is made by Digital Pictures, and to my knowledge, they're not still around. And that's probably for an obvious reason. These games did not catch on. Probably for the best. Uh, yeah, made by Tom Zito. I bet he regrets all of this now. Same with James Riley. So, we're not going to skip ahead just yet, because I want you to see some of the 90s glory that's in this. So, here we are in Night Trap. Now, the big difference between the Sega CD version and the Sega CD 32X version, the video on the Sega CD 32X fills the screen most of the way. Most of the full motion video on just straight Sega CD is closer to being like that. And it's also lower resolution and shrunk. It's, it's terrible. So here we are. Typical 1990s SWAT team-esque police force where it's required for you to have a mullet and a mustache. And here is our, our main guy, I'm Sims. Sims. Scat team, Scat team commander. I don't think they thought that one through. But we're going to skip this video just because that goes on for a while. The point of this game is you are looking through 
different camera angles, trying to find people breaking into this house to get a hold of the people in it. Now, you've seen Mr. Gorilla going across the screen, doing a bit of a waddle. Um, we didn't catch him in time. We didn't catch him in time either. Apparently, we started off missing five people. I wonder if that has to do with me uh, skipping the opening cutscene, because that seems to only happen when I do that. Um, when I actually watched it in full, I started off with missing zero people. But we're going to try to see if we can capture when it gets to the red. If we can get to one of these screens before they waddle off to who knows where. Now, you would think... Alright. Is he catchable? No, he had to be back here. I think he's catchable when he turns this corner. Now, if you follow the map, in theory, you should know where he's going. He should be here. And there he is. And now, we captured him, we got him in the red. He went through the steaming floorboards. Great, we captured one out of ten possibilities. Now, the only thing is, while that worked for us that time, that doesn't always work. I followed them room to room, and it looks like they're going this way, and they, they're not there. Now, this is the family. This is the family that owns the house. The scat team is suspicious of them as much as they are of whoever's breaking in. If you sit here and watch this, because it's kind of interesting, the acting with them is all right. Um, some people are better than others. But if you actually sit there and watch it, you're going to be missing all the people breaking in. So what you have to do is you got to constantly flip through these things and just hope you come across people. Here are the other people that are coming. These are the group of teenagers that are coming to this house party. She's undercover. So what they think is happening is these people come to this house as a, like a rental and the family kidnaps them. That's, that was what the story we skipped was. But once again, if we sit on that for too long, um, we'll miss people breaking into the house. Now, there's A, selects your camera, B, activates a trap, which, here we go. Here comes Gorilla Man. We're gonna watch this here. Ah, there we go. We captured two people down the steaming floorboards. Wonderful. But you gotta pay attention to that. It's the only way. If you do it while it's not up there, it beeps at you. C changes your access code. There's a lot of colors for access code. It's always starting on blue. And then you do have to kind of follow the family to figure out what it changes to. I have yet to figure out what video shows the family. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, I think it's too late. Once he gets over here, yeah, see, it, it, it considers that a loss. Uh, I've yet to find which video feed actually has them telling us which code it's changing to. Alright, now we captured those two guys. Steaming wallboards. Off they go. I did hear them in the kitchen. The family saying, let's tell the kids to change the code. Just set them down anywhere, girl. Her specifically said that. The only problem... I went through everything after she said that, and I could not find where they tell them or where that comes up. It, I have no idea. Yeah, she's suspicious. Oh, we just we, we just missed them. Like I said, you, you can't sit and watch the interesting parts of this. You have to be flipping through all this garbage and waiting for it to go red. There we go. How many did we get? I think we got one while he does the Mortal Kombat stance, and then Gorilla's off into the mirror. It's weird. The most I've ever captured was about 10. Oh, are we gonna get this guy? Yeah, we did. So usually if you've missed, I think it's usually around 42, or you had 42 opportunities, um, and you didn't hit a certain number, it eventually just says you're bad at this and it kicks you out. So, every time I've played this, it's always me, like, just struggling to find people to capture, and then I just lose. So, let's see if we can... I think this might be where she says about the code. Oh, Victor, you monster. Let's have the boys change the code to be safe. All right. 
So, the boys changed the code. They go off to the right. And now, where the heck did they go? Because it's not where... It, this is the room that's to the right of there. They're not there. They're not in the living room. That's also to the right. Are they outside? No. There's bad guys outside. All right, let's capture these bad guys. We captured the guy from the roof. But in the process, they're in the, they're trying to change the code on us. And they're nowhere to be found in this house. We've gone through every room. We're back in the kitchen. The lights are off. Oh, something's happening. You really get it. Okay. That might have been where they got the code changed, but I missed it, so I don't know what the color is going to be. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to go ahead and try to capture some... Well, I can't capture the family. I think now the family is going to be in this corner room for pretty much from now on. They're going to have, like, karaoke and all that kind of garbage. Uh, or the teenagers, not the family. The family, I think, goes out to dinner or some, some event. But let's see if I can capture this. He went the wrong way. I couldn't capture him if I wanted to. He should have gone to the kitchen. That's the room. Oh, oh yes, he did, because it changed angles. All right, here he is. I have a feeling the code's going to be different now, but I missed what the code's going to be. Yeah, see? So now I have no idea. So now what I have to do is hope I can find enough of these people where I can get them in the red, and then just try all, like, six or seven options here. Because it's not the same. The first time it swapped to yellow. And then the second time I played this, it did not swap to yellow. Here they are doing their karaoke. That's probably copyrighted, so let's get out of there. <laughs> Alright, something's happening here. Okay, they gorillaed off. We missed them. I think one of them went into either the room or the bathroom. That's If they're in the hallway and they go to the left, there's only two choices to the left. And they're not in either one. So he's part of the... The scat people and like a big pile of scat that he is he gets captured I've never been able to not have him get captured here and they pretty much like they come up with like a, one of those extendo claws and then he comes up with like a a toy screwdriver and just puts it into the back of his head with like the uh, the vacuum from Ghostbusters on his back I don't know what's happening to be fully honest we're gonna lose. We're already at a difference of like 8 to 34. Usually when it's about 42 to 8, <laughs> that's usually when the, the guy comes in and says you're really bad at this and he kicks you out. They're still dancing away. Alright. Oh, there were some bad guys outside. Well, we missed them. But, you get the general idea. This game is incredibly difficult. I don't really understand it. I must be not understanding something. It, it, we missed somebody else. I have no idea where. But this is Night Trap. This is the better version of Night Trap. So, I, I still want to get a copyright strike, so we're not going to do that. That's the other scat pile. Um, yeah. Is it worth the $30? It's an interesting game. It's, it's a part of history that has come and gone... Thankfully, but uh, we're going to leave it at that and we'll see you next time.